y'all, and welcome to the Stripe Show podcast brought to you by Encore Golf. Encore designs high-performance golf balls for players of all skill levels and swing speeds. Get fitted for your perfect golf ball today at EncoreGolf.com. Well, it is Friday, December 10th, an abnormally hot week in Florida for December. I think it's a high of like 85 today. Um, it's so hot here, especially kind of insane to be training for this half marathon that I talked about on my socials last week. Um, I thought it was going to be so smart to be training this time of year because it was going to be nice and cool. <sighs> I'm yawning. So if that tells you anything about where I'm at this week, um, very hot week in Florida this week, but um, I know a lot of you listening up north where you don't get to play golf and don't have 85 degree weather have no sympathy for me, so I completely understand. Um, a lot to catch you up on this week in golf. Wanted to do just a traditional happy hour express today, get you caught up on everything that's going on. That's what we like to do here on Fridays, um, get you caught up as quick as possible if you're on YouTube. My dog would like to say hi. Um, so yeah, we're going to start with the obvious news of the week. Tiger Woods has committed to play in the PNC championship with his son, Charlie. So it's pretty crazy. This timeline of events, which I'll get to in a little bit, but he ended the suspense. He finally is or not finally is not the right word, but he's making his competitive return to golf later this month on Wednesday. He committed to the PNC championship, which is next week here in Orlando at the Ritz. Um, Golf Channel coverage begins 1.30 next Saturday. So do keep note of that. That's one week and one day from today. It's just two days. So 36 hole, two man scramble. Um, it's his first tournament of any kind since last year's PNC championship. And it's about just about 10 months from his crash. So um, it's going to be pretty exciting to see him play again. I know he had mentioned that he was only going to uh, play in the hit and giggle events, um, which I Twitter has now fully embraced as one of their favorite terms, which I agree. Um, but yeah, the, the one thing that I want to talk about here is Charlie Woods and we need to pump the brakes on everybody saying that Charlie is going to win majors and Charlie's going to be the next tiger. We need to lay off of him a little bit because I'm wondering how you would feel um, if you were what, eight, nine years old with that weight of the world and the pressure on your shoulders at that age. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong. I know that my next weekend will not be spent watching the crucial NFL football games for the postseason. They will be watching that eight year old play golf. So that's sick. Um, but the golf channel did do a cool timeline on tiger's return after his car crash. So let me run you through it here. Um, November 15th, 2020 was Tiger's most recent PGA Tour start. Um, he finished T38. Um, and then the PNC Championship last year was December 20th. So it will be literally right out of year. And then remember a month after that, when Woods announced that he had undergone a fifth uh, procedure on his back to remove a pressurized disc fragment. And we were all like, what? Hello? What happened? When was that? Um, so that was interesting. And then two days ahead of the crash on February 21st, he made his final public appearance for almost 10 months when he was on the CBS broadcast with Jim Nance. We all remember that. Um, and then February 23rd, 2021, he was involved in that single car rollover crash outside of Los Angeles. Um, returned home from the hospital on March 16th just under a month later, tweeting his gratitude for the support, which was the first time that we'd heard from him since the crash. Um, and then November 21st basically broke the internet by tweeting that three second video of himself swinging with the caption, making progress. Um, and then November 30th made his first public appearance by holding a press conference ahead of the hero world challenge, which was just about two weeks ago. And then last week at the Hero World, World Challenge, he was seen on the range multiple times throughout the week. And then obviously this Wednesday announcing that he would return to competitive golf at the PNC Championship. So very awesome timeline there. I thought it was interesting to look back because I don't know about you guys, but it seems like to me that it's been a lot longer than 10 months. Um, just not having Tiger in 
in the realm of golf that we have been so spoiled to have him in, but that, that timeline there, kudos to golf channel for that, because that was, that was pretty cool to look at. Um, next up, Greg Norman is backing the new LIV and golf investments that we know we've, we've talked about that several times in the podcast. Um, he's also the host of the QBE shootout, the shark shootout. A lot of people like to call it. And the, that's the challenge season event that's co-sanctioned by the PGA Tour. That's this weekend, the QBE challenge, the QBE shootout. So due to some conspiracy theories or not, or, you know, take it for what it is, the Wi-Fi went out just before Greg Norman was supposed to have a press conference. Um, so no one but the people on site could see it. Okay, you can do with that what you will. Of course, reading through the tra transcript, yes, Greg Norman, give us nothing. Give us absolutely nothing. We love to see it. Read through the whole transcript. He mentions maybe it was like one question. Basically didn't tell us anything else that we didn't already know. So that was boring. Basically, um, let's see. Looking through the quote here, it said... Uh, um, yeah, he basically was asked two questions about LAV golf investments, and it was nothing that didn't that we didn't already know. So I was just pretty disappointed in that. Um, I personally have talked about this on the podcast with Travis a couple weeks ago, and we did a happy hour. I feel like I don't know if it's the reporters that are that are getting a little shy and a little sheepish when it comes to asking these um, these tough questions, but. Um, I've been a little bit disappointed with the with the questions and the things that we have not been able to get answered recently, whether it's Greg Norman, whether it's Tiger, whatever it is. So we'll leave that for what it is, um, not to mention the Wi-Fi going out. So there's that. Um, then we've got Thorpe Jorn Olison. I think it's Olison. Y'all remember this story? When he was accused of sexually assaulting a woman on a flight to Britain from a World Golf Championship event in Tennessee in 2019. Do you guys remember this story? Um, so he faced allegations of grabbing a woman's breast, pushing a flight attendant, and urinating on a first-class passenger seat. Although he says he has no memory of this behavior after drinking alcohol and taking sleeping tablets. Um, but... On Wednesday, he was cleared of the charges and the 31 year old wept and hugged his partner after being acquitted at a London court. Um, so that's interesting. I don't quite know. I don't know much about, you know, the courtroom jargon and all that. I don't know how that just gets let off like that. Um, jury deliberated for less than an hour, but here's what uh, Olison said in a statement after the verdict, I want to apologize wholeheartedly to everyone on board the flight who was affected by my behavior. I do not remember anything that happened after takeoff, but I'm embarrassed and ashamed by the account of my actions. Da, 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 da. Um, I have paid a very heavy price for my mistake. Um, this case has had a devastating impact on me personally, on my family and my career. Um, so yeah, at the time of the incident, he was ranked number 62. So this was, this was a pretty jarring um, thing when it happened, which I'm sure you guys remember it, but now he's number 432 in the world. So 62 to 432, you could say that that, um, that, that did its, did it, did its due diligence on him. So interesting to see that he was clear to those charges. And then lastly, my favorite story of the week. A police chase made its way onto a golf course. Forget car path only, okay? In Vero Beach, a lady, a 60-year-old lady named Jody Harvey, um, was took this high-speed police chase onto Grand Harbor Golf Course in Vero Beach. She was driving a Toyota 4x4, so she was prepared. But it, the video's out there. If you work on a maintenance crew, just don't look because you're not going to want to see it. But of course, you know, she was charged with the DUI, aggravated assault, a whole, a whole slew of other charges as to be expected. But the image of this lady, the video, I don't want to say it's funny because obviously it's, it's horrific for the golf course and it's terrible that's happened, but, um, it's a little funny, I will say. Um, and if you want to look at the video, 
and you don't have, if you, and your stomach isn't going to turn by watching what happened to this very nice golf course, I would encourage you to do so. Um, anyway, yeah, this week, the QBE shootout where Matt Kuchar and Harris English will defend their title. It should be a nice weekend for sports yet again. And um, just wanted to catch you guys up on everything that's going on in this week in golf. Like to keep it short on Fridays. Um, and other than the Tiger and the PNC news, y'all, you know that that, that kind of took over this weekend. Um, with this week, which is completely fine. I'm excited to get to watch that next weekend, Saturday, Sunday. Um, I had a guy DM me on Instagram saying, Hey, I know you live in Orlando. Do you know anybody with tickets? Um, no. And if I did, do you really think I would give them to you? Okay. That's what I thought. So anyway, you guys, I hope you guys have a great weekend. Um, pour something strong. Cause I don't know about y'all, but it's been a long weekend. I feel like I'm getting a head cold. Um, so, uh, fight it off with something clear for me and, um, make it a great day. And I hope you enjoyed this one. And we'll be back next week with some more fire guests. If you haven't watched all the podcasts or listened to the ones with this week, we had some awesome guests. We had a two-parter from Billy Horschel. Um, Chris Como was on the podcast yesterday with Travis talking all about Bryson and his other players like Jason Day. So really stacked podcast lineup this week and coming up next week too. So be sure to check them out if you're bored this weekend or going on a walk or a run. I um, would highly encourage it. So make it a great weekend, you guys, and we'll see you next week.